We begin tonight with the breaking news exclusive by NBC News, a report on the treatment of children by U.S. border agents, which includes an allegation of sexual assault. The report, first published on NBCNews.com by Jacob Soboroff and Julia Ainsley, details the findings of some government investigators who have been interviewing children held in Arizona. Julia Ainsley will join us in a moment to discuss her reporting, including the sexual assault of a teenage girl. A 15-year-old girl from Honduras described a large bearded officer putting his hands inside her bra, pulling down her underwear, and groping her as part of what was meant to be a routine pat-down in front of other immigrants and officers. The girl said she felt embarrassed as the officer was speaking in English to other officers and laughing during the entire process, according to a report of her account. A teenage boy accused officers of calling the boys puto, Spanish slang for male prostitute. NBC News reports in nearly 30 accounts obtained from significant incident reports prepared between April 10th and June 12th by case managers for the Department of Health and Human Services, the department responsible for migrant children after they leave CBP custody. Kids who spent time in the Yuma border station repeatedly described poor conditions that are not pure byproducts of overcrowding. They reported being denied a phone call, not being offered a shower, sleeping on concrete or outside with only a mylar blanket, and feeling hungry before their 9 p.m. dinner time. Joining us now is Julia Ainsley, one of the reporters who broke this story. She is a national security and justice reporter for NBC News. Uh, and Julia, this is extraordinary reporting, and uh, as I read it, it is based on government reports of what's going on in, in this facility. And that's key, Lawrence, because it's not that this is coming from their individual lawyers and that the government has not been aware of this behavior. Some of these interviews date back to April. They go from mid-April to mid-June, and these are routine interviews. When a child is taken out of Border Patrol custody and placed in the hands of Health and Human Services, they're assigned a caseworker. And the first thing that person does is sit down with the child and talk about everything they've been through. And oftentimes, they describe what they went through in Border Patrol custody. So Jacob and I went through dozens of these. And we found these incidents that are new to us and you to new to you and I tonight, but they are not new to the government. And I think that that's really key, that they've known about this for some time, particularly the sexual assault allegation. We went to DHS and they said that that is under investigation by their inspector general, but they couldn't answer basic questions like, is this large bearded officer that she described still employed? by Customs and Border Protection? Has he had any kind of punishment or recourse? What was the result of this? And at first, at that initial intake, the officer said, no, there will be no investigation. Um, so at this point, we think they're looking into it. We don't know how long it took them. Also. What this really does, if you zoom back, we've heard a lot of reports about terrible conditions because of overcrowding in El Paso, Texas, like that Clint, Texas border facility we've been talking about for weeks, and also in Rio Grande Valley. This widens it to Arizona, which shows it's not just happening in Texas, there's something systemic in border protection where these agents are not being held accountable, and it's more than just an overcrowding problem. Overcrowding doesn't cause sexual assault. Overcrowding doesn't cause agents to come in and retaliate against children who are upset because they're getting poor water and poor food and take away the only mats they have to sleep on. Overcrowding doesn't mean you don't offer a child a shower. Um, so we're seeing something that is systematic, and, and I think there are still more questions than answers, unfortunately. <laughs> Julia, this comes after a, a big New York Times and El Paso Times combined team uh, effort reporting uh, in Sunday's New York Times uh, about what they find going on in the, in the facility, the Border Patrol Station at Clint, Texas. And one of the things that was included in that report were unnamed uh, Border Patrol agents uh, talking about how they were reporting this kind of thing uh, up the ladder, up the chain of the command, and nothing was happening. And it's actually a very, repeatedly, a very sympathetic portrayal of some Border Patrol agents, at least some of them, uh, who refer to the conditions as heartbreaking. How do you square that reporting with this reporting? And did in, in, in any of the government reports uh, about what these children experienced, did any of those children report uh, positive experiences uh, with Border Patrol agents or uh, feeling the sympathies uh, of Border Patrol agents? 
So I think we have to look at the context of these reports. They would only do a report with their case manager if they experienced something troubling. So we aren't going to get glowing reports of border agents coming to their rescue. That isn't something that we saw. We saw more of the reports of the negative behavior, but I think that is what would trigger a report like this to be filed in the first place. But yes, reporting that Jacob and I have done previously did show that border agents have been concerned about this in the past. They were even in El Paso arming themselves because they were worried about riots because they were, saw how these people were being treated. Some of them were going into early retirement because they just couldn't take the treatment. Uh, they couldn't take their jobs in the way that these immigrants were being treated in their custody. They felt overwhelmed. And so I don't want to say that all of these border agents aren't doing their job, but there's clearly something going on here when the concerns of those border agents aren't being heard and then the concerns of these children aren't being heard by officials in Washington in a time in a timely matter. What we've heard over and over again again from officials here, like Acting Secretary Kevin McAleenan, is that they simply need more space. And in Yuma, they did open a soft-sided facility in the end of June to move more children there, just outside the border station where all of these incidents took place. And yes, that alleviates overcrowding. That would alleviate the problem one boy described in this report where he had to wait for someone to stand up before he could find a place to lie down and go to sleep. It alleviates that, but it doesn't alleviate the misconduct that we've seen, and it doesn't hold accountability for a lot of these situations that we've heard of, not just in Yuma, but across the border. Julie Ainsley, please stay with us as we're joined in our discussion now by two Democratic congresswomen from California who visited uh, the facilities in El Paso and in Clint, Texas last week. Congresswoman Judy Chu and Congresswoman Nanette Berrigan joining us now. And uh, uh, Congresswoman, I want you to know Julia is still here. If you want to ask her anything about what she found, I just want to add to her reporting to you. Uh, Congresswoman Berrigan, let me begin with you. She talks about retaliation. A 16-year-old Guatemalan boy uh, reports that when uh, they complained about the taste of the water and the food that they were given, the Border Patrol uh, agents uh, took the mats out of their cell in retaliation, uh, forcing them to sleep on hard concrete. And, uh, and of course, uh, Congresswoman, as, as Julie just said, these are the reports of the negative experiences uh, that the children are having. It's pretty sick and disturbing that you have border agents retaliating if a child is saying that the, the water tastes bad. I mean, to punish them so that they can't sleep or they have to sleep on a hard floor is very disturbing, Lawrence. Um, this is why we need to make sure that Congress has the ability to go into these facilities to have oversight provisions, but then making sure we're holding people accountable. This is completely unacceptable. And uh, Congressman Ch Woman Chu, uh, uh, Julia's reporting also uh, shows that the children don't know uh, whether it's day or night because the lights are kept on 24 hours a day. They don't really have a sense of time uh, and other kind of sense uh, deprivation that they're constantly going through. The conditions that were described uh, were absolutely horrifying. And uh, these reports even go one step further with the sexual assault. It does remind me of what we saw at Clint. And it shows that there is a huge problem with the Customs and Border Patrol. There is a callousness on the part of the CPP agents, which we saw, of course, in their Facebook posts, which showed them laughing at the deaths of migrants. So there is a problem from the grassroots CBP agents all the way up to the very top, I think, and that's why we do need to hold them accountable. That's what our House bill would have done. We need to make sure that there are minimum standards of medical care, hygiene and nutrition and accountability as far as where these funds go. The, the funds that we just allocated better go to improving the conditions of these facilities so that these people can be treated humanely. And Congressman Barrigan, uh, uh, Julia Ainsley's reporting is pointing directly to where this information is in government reports. Uh, are these reports that the Congress is going to be able to obtain? Uh, we should be getting these reports, and it's disturbing that Congress has not heard about this. Uh, we've certainly had um, different officials come before Congress. Nobody has brought this up. As a matter of fact, uh, when we had an official from ORR come in and was asked about sexual allegations, abuse allegations, um, they almost got offended by it. And so this is critically important that Congress be informed about what is happening so we can continue to have oversight. And Lawrence, I begin to wonder whether we need to have new 
procedures in place where we have female officers overseeing young girls at these facilities and not letting the men do it. It's just disturbing when you hear about this and then to hear that there was going to be no investigation, completely unacceptable, and we have to do something to stop this from happening and exposing other young girls to people like this if this is what is going on. Uh, Congresswoman Chu, uh, there is an accusation of sexual assault in, in Julia's reporting, but that's coming from a government report, and it's a government report uh, that the Congress has not seen. Uh, is there a way for the Congress to get every possible report of any accusation of sexual abuse uh, in these facilities? We need to get those reports, and we can get those reports. Uh, we need to make sure that this sexual assault is investigated, but even more importantly, we need to make sure that there is fundamental change in what's going on. Now, when we went to Clint, uh, I, I was just shocked that the head supervising uh, Border Patrol agent just denied all the accounts that uh, we had heard. Uh, we know that when the Flores immigration attorneys went to investigate, 60 children reported pretty much the same horrific conditions. And now we have nearly 30 accounts of what is taking place at the Yuma facility. Uh, this head agent denied everything. But you know what? I believe the children. And we should all believe the children. And we have to change these conditions. Uh, Julia Ainsley, uh, quickly, is there any way to, for in your reporting to determine how common uh, this negative experience is? Is it something that most of the children experience? Uh, is there a way of, of putting it into some kind of uh, shape in, in terms of uh, how, how common this is? That's a really good question. I mean, what I would need to ask Health and Human Services is out of all of the interviews you do with the thousands of children that are coming to your custody, how many of them report, uh, do these significant incident reports? I, I haven't gotten that answer. Um, but it is clear that, you know, what Jacob and I reviewed, Jacob Soberoff, my colleague, what we reviewed is just the tip of the iceberg. We understand that there were hundreds of other reports from Yuma. We're just getting our hands on the first batch now. So there are more where this comes from. Julia Ainsley, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your reporting. And Congresswoman Judy Chu, Congresswoman Annette Berrigan, thank you for starting off our discussion tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.